Shrimp like Neocaridina have a hard shell that protects them, but it doesn't change size. In order to grow, they need to shed their old shell and make a new one that's bigger in a process known as molting. Shrimp need the right ingredients in their water, or else your colony is going to slowly die off over a few weeks or months. It's an incredibly sad and frustrating experience that we'd love to help you avoid. The question is, how do we know whether our shrimp are getting what they need? That's where the water parameter general hardness or GH comes in. If you have GH in the right range, then you're probably giving your shrimp the ingredients they need for a healthy molt. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean probably? How do I make sure my shrimp have what they need? <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get to that. We're going to explain everything you as a shrimp keeper needs to know about general hardness, and we're going to clear up some common misconceptions that no other video talks about. We're going to do all that by baking chocolate chip cookies. That's because shrimp are basically tiny bakeries, metaphorically speaking. That'll make sense soon, but let's start with the preparation. This is Shrimply Explained, it is all in the name. Before humans or shrimp start baking, I don't, why did I just gesture myself? I'm, I'm, I'm not a shrimp. I want to make that very clear. Before shrimp or humans start baking, then we need a recipe and the right ingredients. First, I poured through the literature to find the best chocolate chip cookie recipe online. <laughs> then I bought everything from the store and separated the wet and dry ingredients. It's a little different for shrimp. They have the recipe for the shell baked into their DNA, but they can't just go to the store to get what they need. We shrimp keepers need to provide that. The question is, how do we know if we're doing that? The answer is partially by checking general hardness in your tank and making sure it's in the right range for your shrimp species. GH is basically a measure of the wet and dry ingredients in your tank, specifically the concentration of key minerals in the water. There are two different types of units for GH, like how a recipe may use cups or grams. The GH units are either parts per million or degrees or drops of hardness. Neocaridina, for example, generally do best when kept between 6 and 10 dGH. We always recommend measuring GH using a liquid test kit like this one from API. The test strips are cheaper, but much less reliable. If your tank has too few minerals in it, meaning the GH is too low, then the shells that your shrimp try to make will be too soft. Like if I add too many eggs or too much water and make a runny batter. The shell isn't going to be literally liquid, but it may be too flexible and clingy for a shrimp to escape from when they try to mold. The opposite is also true, whereby too many minerals can create a stiff shell that's difficult to escape from. In both these scenarios, a shrimp won't be able to molt and will eventually die. If you're losing shrimp, then there are three signs indicating that molting might be an issue. First is the frequency of molts. Shrimp molt about once a month as adults and even more frequently when they're younger. So if you have 10 shrimp and you're losing one or two intermittently every few days, then it could be a molting issue. The key to confirm this is by checking for the following two signs in tandem with the frequency. The second sign is a lack of visible molts. If you're losing shrimp and don't see any molts over two to four weeks, despite checking a couple times a day, then molting issues are a likely cause. Remember that it will be more difficult to see molts in heavily planted tanks. The final and surest sign of molting problems is called the white ring of death, which appears as the intersection between the carapace and abdomen in the middle of the shrimp. We're just going to call it the death ring for the rest of the video because the white ring of death is a mouthful. After hearing that, you might look in your tank and immediately see shrimp with a tiny separation in that same spot. They're all going to die. I'm just kidding. Shrimp often show a small pre-molt separation that is commonly mistaken for this death ring. Here's how to tell them apart. And yes, you can tell them apart before the shrimp is actually dead. What identifies the death ring from a healthy pre-molt ring is the size and shape. Here is a normal pre-molt ring compared to the death ring. The death ring is typically a much larger gap in the shell, and the edges on either side of the break often appear to be scrunched up, indicating the shrimp has struggled and been unable to break out. When you see either of those two signs, then your shrimp likely won't molt properly. They may survive for a week or more with the death ring, but they eventually die to the stress of being stuck in their shell. If you still aren't sure what type of ring your shrimp has, try observing it for the next 24 hours and see if the ring goes away. If it does, then it was a pre-molt ring. That being said, if you do think your shrimp are having trouble molting, then check your GH to see if it's in the right range for the shrimp species you're keeping. If it isn't, then there's your likely culprit. 
you can check out our GH article on TrimplayExplained.com to find ways to increase or decrease GH. Sometimes though, shrimp have molting problems even when GH is in the right range, especially if you're using tap water. Why would that happen? Well, that's where baking comes in again to help explain a common problem with both baking and shell making, and that is the right ratio of ingredients. For example, look at the pile in this bowl. It's the right weight that our dry ingredient should be. The problem is that this bowl is filled entirely with salt and would taste like garbage. It's the same with GH, because GH measures the total amount of dry ingredient, but it does not measure if you have the right ratio, the right mixture to form healthy shells. The two most important minerals, and the ones that GH measures along with other trace minerals, are magnesium and calcium. A shrimp shell is roughly 20-40% to 40 calcium carbonate, so the need for calcium is obvious. But what does magnesium do? It turns out it's also incorporated into the shell, but to a lesser degree, as shown in these images where x-rays were used to measure the quantities of calcium and magnesium in a shrimp shell. So you clearly need some magnesium. Too much can be a problem though, because magnesium effectively works the opposite of how sugar affects cookies. You see, too much sugar in your cookies can create a brittle caramelized bottom of crystallized sugar. In contrast, too much magnesium prevents calcium carbonate from crystallizing and makes the shell too flexible. This is because magnesium partially controls where calcium carbonate takes on a stiff crystallized structure or where it remains unorganized in a softer state known as amorphous calcium carbonate. Too much calcium carbonate in either state prevents the shell from functioning properly, which is a big reason why the right ratio of minerals is important. Our cookie recipe tells me the correct ratio of ingredients, so it's easy to whip up some dough and throw it in the oven. The recipe for shrimp shells isn't written down though, so how can we figure out the right ratio? For that, let's go to the scientific literature. We pulled water quality data from a study on a stream in Taiwan where neocaridina live. From there, we calculated the calcium to magnesium ratio in that stream. It showed 2.6 to 3.3 parts of calcium for every one part magnesium. We expected this data to match closely with the calcium to magnesium ratio in a remineralizer designed specifically for shrimp, but we were wrong. In fact, the shrimp specific remineralizer we tested had roughly double the magnesium found in the streams in Taiwan. For quick background information, Remineralizers are salt powders designed to dissolve in water and give all the minerals your shrimp need, including calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and other trace elements. These remineralizer brands keep their recipe a secret, so I used a modified version of the API salt water calcium test procedure to figure out the calcium to magnesium ratio to within 5 mg per liter of accuracy. We found about 40 ppm of calcium in remineralized water with 10 dGH. By plugging those numbers into the calcium to magnesium ratio calculator on TrimplayExplained.com, we get a ratio of two to one. That seems pretty close to the ratio found in the stream in Taiwan, but it's not because we need to match the units. You see, the stream data used molar equivalents, whereas this calculator uses milligrams per liter to calculate the ratio. We won't go into the math here, but this means the stream data actually shows about a five milligram per liter ratio. So we have ratios ranging from two to five milligrams per liter of calcium for every one milligram of liter of magnesium. C-chem equilibrium, a remineralizer not specifically designed for shrimp, also fell within this range, coming in at about 3.3 to 1 milligrams per liter. So, where does this leave us? From the current data, it seems that there's a pretty wide range of calcium-magnesium ratios that shrimp can live in. I'd like to think that the salty shrimp manufacturers have tested different ratios and found a 2 to 1 is best, but I'd have to interview them to learn more. If any of you happen to have a connection with someone involved with salty shrimp or Dennerlay or any other shrimp brand who makes remineralizers, then I'd love to get in touch. Anyway, all this theory is really interesting, but how do we get the right ratios in our tanks? There are two ways. The first is to use a remineralizer, like salty shrimp. It's kind of like using a bag of pre-made mix. A pre-made bag is maybe slightly more than all the raw ingredients individually, but you're guaranteed to have the right mixture in there. The same is true with a remineralizer. Some remineralizers only raise GH, while others raise both GH and KH, so be aware of what you want to do before buying them. The other option is to use your own tap water. Tap water is easy to get, but it might not have the right water parameters, so you're going to have to test everything, including GH. The good news is that the average US tap water typically has a 3 to 1 calcium magnesium ratio with a GH of 6 to 7 dGH or 116 ppm. If it's got the right GH, then it's probably fine. We're not trying to scare you off of tap water. 
It's a little bit less predictable. It's a little less controlled, but it often works just fine. If you do experience molting problems though, or if you want to be cautious and confirm that you have the right ratios before putting in shrimp, then you can combine a GH and calcium test to calculate your magnesium concentration. If your tank's ratio is off significantly, then we also provide a list of ingredients along with an explanation of how to dose those properly. A link to this tool is available in the description. What you don't want to start doing is just adding fresh coral to your tank when you see molten what? problems. As we've already established, too much of any one mineral <coughs> can cause problems in your tank. That can work if your tank is just missing calcium, but it may make the mineral ratio worse in tanks that already have enough calcium. If you are going to play with your water parameters, make sure you know what the problem is so you don't just make things worse. So to summarize, GH tells us whether we have the right total amount of minerals in our water, like whether we have the right amount of wet versus dry ingredients in our recipe. It does not tell us whether those dry ingredients or those minerals are present themselves in the right ratio. I just heard the timer. Our cookies are done. Let's pull them out and see how they are. Just know that they turned out perfectly because I am a great baker, just like I'm a great shrimp keeper. Stay humble. Okay, that's the basics of GH for shrimp keepers. Once you know what shrimp species you want to keep and what the right parameters are, then it's time to set up and cycle your tank. Shrimp Explained has a simple four-step guide to take you through the process of creating an extremely healthy and stable ecosystem for your shrimp. Click here to watch that video. You can also visit shrimpthexplained.com to learn about other aspects of the shrimp keeping hobby. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.